Hey guys, um, we're gonna talk about the word a little bit. While we at home, while we have some downtime, let's talk about God's word. Let's let's get built up in the word of God so so we have a, a understanding, a revelation, some clarity of some things. Okay, so there are there are seven things, seven things to build or, your, or to add to your faith. Seven things to add to your faith. Seven things to build upon your faith. So the very beginning stages right here is is repentance of sin and faith towards Jesus Christ. But you have to build on that faith. A profession of faith without the actions, can it sustain you? Is it pleasing to God? Or, or does God want to build you with more? Build you up more because as a child of God. So once again, I'm going to say it again. There are seven things that you're going to find in, in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. We're going to read those 3 through 9. We're going to read those things. So there are seven things that God's desire for each and every person to build upon their faith. That profession that they, you made, that profession in Jesus, okay? So the first thing I want to say is this right here. Don't be offended. Please, don't be offended at the word of God. Jesus said it in Matthew chapter 11, verse 6. Jesus said, blessed is he that whoever it is that shall not be offended in me. So don't be offended at the word of God. God's word is designed to correct you. God's word is designed to give you a revelation, to show you the path and where you're going. Is it right or is it wrong? So this is what God's word is designed. So don't be offended at God's word. Don't be offended at the words of Jesus Christ, okay? Because offense causes us to, to separate. When we get offended, it causes us to be angry. I'm going to show that in the scripture. That is in Matthew chapter 24, verse 10. You have your Bibles? Go there. See it for yourself. Matthew chapter 24, verse 10. It's Jesus says, he says, And then many shall be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. When we get offended, friends, that we will betray people when we are mad. When we get offended, friends, we will hate one another when we're mad. So Jesus says in Matthew 24, verse 10, he says, don't be offended. When many people are offended, he said, you betray one another, you hate one another. So we're going to talk about those seven things to build upon. And this is, this is located in 2 Peter. You have your Bibles, go to your Bibles, go to the word of God. Let God talk to you while you're at the house. When you're in the house, hear about God's word. And so in 2 Peter chapter, chapter 1, we'll start at verse 3, okay? And this is what it says. It says, according to his divine power. The divine power of God, according to his divine power, has given to us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. God has given us everything that's pertaining to this life that we need to be successful, to have faith and godliness. I mean, doing it God's way. Okay, according to his power. The only way for you to do it God's way, for God to live inside of you. To, 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 to have faith and to trust him. Remember it says in, in Proverbs chapter 3, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him. Direct your path. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear God and depart from evil. This is health to your body. This is health to your soul. So the Bible goes on to tell us something, that you must trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. So we're going to say seven things to add to that faith, because faith means trust. Trust means faith, and faith means trust. So, of course, okay. So it says, according to his divine power, has given to us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge, through the knowledge, through the knowledge of him that has called us into glory and called us into virtue. See, God has called you to glory. God has called you to a moral, excellent standard. That's what God has called us to. OK, but it's only through the knowledge of Christ. Without the knowledge of Christ, you don't even know these things. The only thing you can see is sin, okay? If I put my hand in before my eyes, what do I see? My hand. I cannot see anything else. But through the knowledge of Christ, he's opened my eyes. I've been able to see and able to understand through the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Let's keep going. It says, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these, by what? By the great and by the precious promises... We might be partakers of the divine nature. 
<laughs> Listen, friend, we need to understand one thing. When we came into this world, we had a sinful nature. That's natural. It's in our blood system. It's in your mind. Naturally, we have a sinful nature. But the Bible goes on to say that we can be partakers of the divine nature, the divine character of God. How? Through the knowledge of Christ. Through the knowledge of Christ, we can be partakers of that, of that divine holy nature. And this also is the way to escape, to escape the corruption in the world. That's through lust. It goes on to say, um, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. The, lust means the ungodly desires. Ungodly desires. So there's, a, there's desires that we have that doesn't line up with God. Only through the knowledge of Christ and the obedience of him can you escape it. Can you get, a, get away from it? Can you overcome it? That's the only way according to the word of God. First Peter no, sorry, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, verse 4, and verse 5 says this. Besides this, giving all diligence, you have to be very careful, earnest. You have to mean this. Mean what you say to search out the scriptures. Giving all diligence, it says add. Here's the word right here. Now we get into it. Now we get into it. Add to your faith. Here it is. Brothers and sisters, God wants to add to our faith. When we're in a time right now, when we're in the house, he says, don't be in the house watching, just watching movies, playing video games, being on the phone, talking all the time. But add to the faith. Remember, the fundamental stages, my friends, the fundamental stages. I'm going to show you this also. The fundamental, the beginning stage is repentance. That's the beginning. The repentance and faith towards God. Repentance and trusting God. That's the beginning stages. I'm going to show this because uh, you can go back. And you can read it and you can see it, okay? The very beginning stages of being a Christian. Let me find my spot here. I kind of lost my spot here, but stay with me for a little bit, okay? Is, is repentance and faith towards God. This is what it says. Hebrews chapter 6. If you have your Bible, verse 1. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1. It says, therefore, leaving the principles or leaving the, the elementary stages, going past the, the fundamentals, it says, of the teachings of Christ. Let us go on unto perfection. Let us go on to maturity. Let us go past the elementary, the beginning stages. So then he goes on to say, not laying again the foundation of repentance. You see, that's the fundamental stages. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 1 tells us that the fundamental stages, the fundamentals or the basic principles of Christianity, according to Hebrews chapter 6 verse 1, is repentance of dead works. Repentance, that's the very first one. And it says, and faith towards God, trusting God, trusting his word. And also the, also the teachings of baptism, that's the fundamental stages. Also, the laying on of hands, that's the fundamental stage. That's the baby, that's the elementary baby level. It also says, um, and the resurrection of the dead. It says, we need to know about the resurrection. Jesus Christ rose from the dead, and there's a resurrection when he comes back. The second resurrection, okay? When we come up. And then it says, and the eternal judgment. There is eternal judgment. All souls will stand before God. But this is, according to Paul, Paul said this is the fundamental stages. So now we're at a point, we're saying, now let's, let's build upon your faith, okay? No longer going around the circle over and over, build upon your trust in your profession. When you profess, I want you to imagine this. In the beginning, when the Bible first said, by calling, by, by professing Jesus is Lord, by saying Jesus is Lord, when the Jews or when the Muslims, anyone in the East, when they say Jesus is Lord, they are forsaking everything. They're forsaking their friends, their family, their religion, their doctrine. They are saying that he is my ruler now. He rules my mind and my heart, my desires. I'm moving towards him or whatever he says. That's what they meant. Um, Sad but say, we've got to be honest, is that now when we say Jesus is Lord in America, when we say Jesus is Lord, it's just become a slogan now. You know, it's just a nice saying. So God is wanting to build upon that faith of that profession that Jesus is Lord to grow you. Okay, so let's keep going here. Verse five. Besides this, given all diligence, add to your faith virtue. Now, the word virtue means add moral excellence okay so i'm going to expound on that just a little bit 
It says, add moral excellency. The very first thing is conduct and behavior. When you say you have faith, the very first thing, according to, according to the apostle who is with Jesus, the very first thing it says to add morality, add integrity, add um, have better manners. That's the first thing to add to your faith in Jesus Christ. Number two, second, first thing is your behavior. The second thing it says to add knowledge. Okay, knowing God, knowing him, okay, who he is, what he said, and what he's done. Okay, we're going to go, I'm going to go to a few scriptures here uh, to support that. Um, let's go to Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7, okay? Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7, it says, The fear of the Lord, the reverence and honor of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, the fear of the Lord is the beginning stages of knowledge that we need to have. And it says, but fools despise wisdom. They get mad at wisdom and they get mad at instructions. Okay. Now let's go to uh, Proverbs chapter 9 verse 10. Proverbs chapter 9 verse 10 says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The reverent, the honor of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy One. You see that? It's understanding. The knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. So when you get knowledge of who, of the holiness of God, of the goodness of God, of His grace, of His mercy, of who He is, when you get that knowledge of who He is, that gives you understanding of what God loves and what He hates. I'm going to be very clear. God loves you. His creation, what he made. But God hates sin. He will destroy sin. Let me say it again very, very clear. God loves you, his creation. He made in his image. But God absolutely despises sin. So, But he made a way to clean you and forgive you of the sin. Okay? So... Knowledge. We need to have knowledge. Reading the word, understanding what it means. Okay, so number one, let's go to it. Taking our time. You know, we're not trying to go fast. You have nowhere to go. <laughs> you're in the house. So if you're in the house, hear God's word, right? If you hear all these Facebook saying that, you know, go in the house, go in the house, go in the house. When you're in the house, listen to God's word. Read your Bible. Okay, we're at 2 Peter chapter 1, get your Bibles, read your Bibles, let God talk to you in the house, and this is what it says. He says, add to your faith, add to it first, your conduct, your behavior. First thing, number one, that's what it says, okay? Virtue, moral excellence, number one. Number two, knowledge. You must know what the Word says. You must know of His promises. You must know of His power. Know of His healing power. Know this for yourself, number two, Okay? Number three, when you get this knowledge, the next thing is self-control. Now, self-control means that when you hear what God say, okay, you got two ears, when you hear, when you hear God's word through his holy word, that means self-control that you would tailor your life according to the word. Self-control. That means you have to now control yourself based off the word, you have to control some of those tempers and attitude, control some of the desires, because the Bible says he that is in you is greater than he that is in the world. So it is, it is the Holy Spirit in you that will help you control yourself so you can have an excellent conduct and behavior. It's not you who would do it. It's you yielding to God. It's you, when you yield to God and yield to his word, the Holy Spirit begins to work in you and give you the power to do it, give you the power and authority to now, you don't no longer, you're not struggling as much, but yes, you will struggle. But he that is in you, remember that, he that is in you gives you the power when you yield to him that is in you, okay? Self-control. Control those, those ungodly desires. Yes, they are difficult. Yes, we all go through them. But the Bible tells you that he is in you is greater. So number one, we're going to take our time because you're in the house. 
Hear God's word. Understand, God wants to add to your faith. A profession by itself is not salvation. The Bible says you must work out your salvation with fear and trembling. You must work it out. It's a continual thing, continual thing. You must work out the salvation. God grants you salvation. God gives you that salvation. Now you have to work it out trusting him. Now you have to work it out believing in him. Now you have to work it out uh, having faith in him and yielding to him humbling yourself to him. You see, so, so the scripture is telling you that he grants you salvation, but you have to work it out now. Okay? With fear and trembling. Because we're in a sinful world. And we have a sinful nature. See, he is in you. He that is in you, he will do the work when we yield to the word of God. So we have to continue to hear the word of God. So let's go over again. Add to your faith. To add to your faith is moral excellence. Your conduct behavior changes. Your mouth, your speech, number one. Number two, knowledge. Get knowledge. With all that getting, get understanding. Number two is knowledge. Know it for yourself. Read the Holy Scriptures. Number three, self-control. Begin to control yourself. What is right and wrong? That means that self has to control yourself with fornication. Control yourself with adultery. Pornography, that's a big one. Control ourselves with our mouths. Control ourselves with these things. He that is in you is greater because you made a profession. He gives unto you. Then it says, the next one is godliness. What is godliness? Okay, Godliness is meaning you're doing it God's ways. Godliness, I'm going to give you a definition of godly. Okay, Because we say godly, and so many times we say godly, and we really don't have a clear understanding. So the word godly means that you are going to conform to the laws and the desires of God. Being godly means you are willing to conform to God's laws and to his desires. When a person is walking or living that way, that I have conformed, say, I have conformed, I have conformed to God's laws and I've conformed to his desires, that makes you a godly person because you are following him that is godly. You are yielding to him that is godly. So when the scripture is saying to you, you must add to your faith, Profession alone cannot make it unless you're on your deathbed. Unless you are on your deathbed. Unless you're on your deathbed, he said, because his hand is not too short, he cannot save you. Then he can because that is it, all right? But you got to work out that salvation because you have more time. He has more work for you to do. You are working in the field. Now he has called you to a job to do. He has called you to more change to do because he desires you. Okay, so let's keep going. Build own your faith, your trust. We say the scriptures, but now let us, let us build upon it as children of God who, who we love the Lord. Love has to do with the heart, has to do with a desire. Okay? Has to do with the desire. Love has to do with the desire. So that means that my action is tailored towards the word. My, 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 my action is, is tailored towards the word. Okay, so let's go again here. Remember, godly. Godly means to conform to the laws of God and to conform to the desires of God. God don't desire you to do some of the things that we be doing. He does not desire that. He does not desire for us to, to show ourselves. We can't. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Uh, let, let me be honest for a few things. We cannot please God. You can't please God exposing your flesh. The Bible says that the flesh will not glory in the presence of God. He's made out of pure light and holiness. So we can't please God in the flesh. So what we have to do is walk in the ways of the spirit and be godly. Listen, godly means, again, conform. Watch my hand. Conform. That has to do with what? Change. You see that? You see that? Okay, I'm on one way. See my hand? I'm one way. I'm going to conform. The Bible talks about he's the potter with the clay. So godly means I'm conforming to God's laws and I'm conforming to his desires. Okay? So let's keep going. Now, once again, let's go over them again. Let's go over them again. Add to your faith. Add to your faith. Of just verbal faith alone or mental faith alone is not what the Bible teaches. He wants the heart, meaning actions. Okay, that's in James chapter 2. We can go there later. But this is what it says. It says, number one, your moral, your conduct, your behavior, number one. Number two, it says that knowledge. Know the Bible for yourself. Read the Holy Scriptures. Get knowledge. Get knowledge. 
Number three, it said when you get that knowledge, self-control. Begin to control yourself according to the word of God. It says, number four, I'm sorry, number four, patience, perseverance. In this world, we must persevere, persevere in what is righteous and what is true and what is honest. We have to persevere and keep pushing forward because it's difficult because we go through trials, we go through tribulations, we go through hardship. So we have to keep pushing towards what is right. Paul said it this way. Paul said that I press towards, press, press towards the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I'm pressing towards the mark that he has for me, that he made me for, that he has desired me for. I'm pressing towards it, okay? Perseverance also means patience. Patience means perseverance. Same meaning, okay? Number five is godliness. I'm, a, I'm conforming to God's laws. I'm conforming to his desires. Number six is brotherly kindness. Brotherly kindness. Kindness. So let's get a, a, a quick understanding of brotherly kindness. Another word for brotherly kindness is benevolent. What does benevolent mean? That's a good question. It means it's an attitude to express goodwill. It has to do with our attitude. An attitude that you have a you express and you desire goodwill for success for one another. You desire to help one another. You, you, um, you are considerate and you are helpful. So that's brotherly kindness. And when you're considerate and you're helpful and you want to do it, you have a good attitude about it. And so this is, this is also part of it. Okay. And the last one is love. The very last one is love, love. Okay. You see, there's a lot until we get to love. I mean, nowadays people say love and have no clue what love means. They just say love. They actually mean lust. They have the first letter right, L, okay? They have the first letter right, but it's not the same definition. Words are important. Definition of words are important. If you have the wrong definition, it will lead you in the wrong path. Do you hear that? Now, hear that, hear that again. If you have the wrong definition, that wrong definition of the word of God will lead you in the wrong path. And then you wonder why you don't understand. You, you see the word, but you have the wrong definition. So it is extremely important to get the right definition for the word of God to lead you in the right path. The Holy Spirit will give you the right definition when you seek after him, when you humble yourself to him. Because that's why he said, uh, Psalm 23 said, he leads you in a path of righteousness for his name's sake. Do you hear that? The Lord will lead you in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Meaning, he gets glory when, you, when we are in the right path. So he wants to glorify his name so he uses us so in the right path. So he will never leave us in the path of the flesh. He will never have us or lead us in the path of destruction or the flesh. But the path of righteousness, the path of peace, the path of knowledge, the path of wisdom, the path of forgiveness, the path of faith, the path of trust. He would lead us in that path so his name would get glorified and magnified through you who is the, his image. So God will always lead us in a path of righteousness, not a path of fear, not a path of destruction, not a path of anger, not a path of bitterness. Remember the first thing I said when, um, when I started? Jesus said, I'm going to read it again. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11, verse 6, blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended because of Jesus and his word. It is a blessing if a person can humble themselves to the word of God and not get offended because the word of God says something contrary to your lifestyle, contrary to the way you believe. Clearly, the Bible will always say something that's contrary, always, because it is a book of the spirit and we walk in the flesh. It will always say things contrary, okay? But it's designed to teach us and to guide us. All right, so remember the seven things. Let's go again to seven things, and we're going to get to the next script, the next verse right below it. Remember, add to your faith, number one, moral excellence, behavior and conduct and co communication. Number two, knowledge. Number three, self-control. Number four, patience, perseverance. Got to keep going. Don't stop. 
Number five, godliness. Number six, brotherly kindness. And number seven, love. Add these things unto you. Now, in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 8, it says, If these things be in you, if these things will be in you and grow. So these seven things need to be in you. These seven things have to grow. They, those things, will make you that you should neither be unuseful. They will make you productive. They will make you productive and fruitful. They will do it in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. We can have knowledge of the word of God. We can have knowledge. But if we don't do these seven things, we can become very useful. I mean, I'm sorry, useless to people around us, to ourselves. We're useless. We're not productive. We can, be, we can make ourselves unproductive because we have knowledge, but we haven't added these seven things to our life, to our, to our attitude. So when we add these things, these things in the scripture will make us pre productive to ourselves, our family, and others. That's an amen. Verse 9. But he that lacks these things is blind. He cannot see or fall off. And have forgotten that he was purged or he was cleansed from his old sins. You see... Without, without adding these seven things, if you don't add these things upon your faith in, in, in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse, verse 5 and 6, if you don't add these things to the profession of faith of Christ Jesus, that's the beginning stages, then it says you're blind. You cannot see or fall off. Well, you can't see or fall off. You only see yourself. You only see your self-condition. God wants us to see. God wants us to see the bigger picture. Okay, let me, let me step back. God wants us to see not just this way, okay, and not just this. So many of us are walking just like this, and you can barely see in front of us, right? You see that? We barely can see. But see, God's desire is for us to see not just here, but to see the bigger picture of what's happening in the world. What's happening, okay? God's desire for us to see the, big, the bigger picture, the bigger picture, so we can be a help to more people so we can speak truth to more people because when we when we are talking to one another we can only see what's happening to us we can only see our only 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 us because he said he said we're blind add these seven things go back and look at this video seven things in in, in second peter chapter one verse uh, three through nine when we add these seven things in our character, in our mind, in our hearts, then it, it help us to see a bigger picture so we can be productive and help other people who don't understand so they can get in the right path. It's God's desire. Okay? I want to share, make a video, because I want you to hear about God's word. God is to, in, in the building process. Um, he wants to build us. Um, I guess I said I said it wrong. I should say the building business. Uh, he's not in the condemning business. Um, once again, I, I keep saying when I go out to the street preaching, I say it, is that sin condemns. If you hold on to that which is condemning you, you get condemned with it. But that's not God's desire. Okay, that's not His will. If you hold on to sin, no matter if it could be small or big, that is what's going to condemn you. If you don't let it go. And throw it away and get get it away from you, then it will stay with you and you get condemned with it. That's not God's desire. He's in the saving business, he's in the restoring business, he's in the forgiveness business, but he's also in the holy business. God is holy. That's the first thing about God. He is holy. And he wants you to be holy. So and take I mean, partakers of the divine nature of him. So I pray that this was helpful. I pray you'll go back. Remember, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11, verse 6, blessed is he who is not offended. But then he said, he said, many shall be offended and they will betray one another and they will hate one another. You see what, see what happened when we get offended? We'll betray and we'll hate because we got offended. So I say unto you, don't be offended at the words of Jesus. His words came to give you life and give you life more abundantly. His word came to restore you, show you in the morality. Look at, look at the world. Look at the, how immoral everyone, especially the sexual immorality. That's the biggest one. 
Look how immoral we are. Look at the thing we watch on television. Killing people. Lying to people. We just sit there and watch for hours. We got video games killing people. Just destroying the image of God. From the womb to grown people. Look, look at what's happening. Morality. That's why he said add these seven things so your conduct and your behavior, your speech will be in an excellent level. You said no longer I do those things because of, because of your faith. Because of your faith in Jesus. So while we was here, I just wanted to speak to you guys about adding those seven things. I encourage you to add those seven things into your faith. Faith alone. Faith alone. The Bible. Go back and read um, James chapter 2. And it talks about can faith alone save you? Or your actions validate your faith. How you present yourself, how you act, validates your faith and your trust. So just saying it or just thinking it, you have to express it in everything you do. So I just encourage you. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Remember, it's a blessing if you don't get offended, but yield and surrender to the Almighty King. Um, I hope you guys have a blessed day. Uh, um, is in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who died and rose again for each and every one of you. In Jesus' name.